Well, hello there, and a warm welcome to Codebase Alpha, uh, the early shift. So, um, if you're out there in Chatland, do give us a, a shout out in chat because uh, it can get lonely at this time of the of the day in the UK. So, a lot of people at work understand that. So, um, we may have to rethink this time, but at the moment it's quite good for me. So, um, yeah. So today we're going to be killing a dragon and taking its stuff. Cody Beard, welcome to the to the stream. Good to see you. Okay, so um, last time um, we were expecting to have Mark Miller on stream as a special guest um, to go through Code Rush with us, but that actually didn't happen. He had a power outage his end. So um, we started some work on uh, the bot, and inside the bot there is a text adventure game, um, which is based on Colossal Cave, the classic text adventure. Back from 1970s, uh, 70. 74, 75, 76, something like that. And so I'm kind of recreating that um, in C Sharp within our bot so we can play it. Um, we've got the bot um, hooked up to Discord and to Slack at the moment, not in, not in the Twitch uh, chat. So um, you've only got uh, the night bot commands and the cloud bot commands uh, currently running in chat. So the custom bot's not running in there. It's not running at all at the moment. So let's just pop over to the code and have a look uh, at where we got last time. So um, let's just pop over. Here we are. So here we are in the code. And we're in the dragon item class. You can see that we've got a class called dragon and it um, is basically um, extending the class um, adventure item, which has a whole bunch of um, properties on it. And we kind of, we set selected properties. And you can see here we started this uh, piece of code um, last time. And the um, the kind of trick to killing the dragon was just to say kill, kill dragon. So you, eventually what we'll do is build up. So if you've got a sword or a trident or an axe or something and you attack the dragon with that, then it's going to just bounce off and be completely harmless. But the secret is just attack it with your bare hands and just say kill dragon. It's quite lame really, I suppose. But that's we, we're trying to, trying to follow the... Um, Follow the uh, the lead of the original code, so we're not um, we're not really trying to uh, expand it too much. Although we will put some surprises in and actually start to go beyond what the original code did. So eventually, the dragon, for example, might get hit points. Who knows? Um, we've all that's to come. And also trying to make um, the game a little bit kind of multiplayer, and hopefully we'll touch on that if we've got time uh, this afternoon. Uh, if not, then um, next. Next time we'll do some um, multiplayer stuff. So, um, so where we got stuck last time was um, basically what happens if you say kill, slay, or murder dragon. You type that into the into the chat or into the um, into the direct message uh, box uh, or the whisper on chat. Then it will say, "Do you want to use your bare hands?" Which is the, this piece of text here. And then what they're supposed to do is take in a yes or no response. And currently, there's no way of doing that. So we need to add that feature. Um, and the best way to do that to start with is to actually add a yes and a no command to the um, to the game. So we'll, we'll actually do that. So over in commands here, um, we've got all our um, commands that exist so, so far. So there's carrying, which is basically inventory. So that's... Um, that's aliased to uh, inv at the moment. We've got drop, we've got help. We've got a kind of generic interact command, which um, is um, how we kind of interact with the environment. So it's not, it, it, it has lots of different kind of um, connotations really. So um, it's, it's basically the use command, but it's kind of much more kind of expressive than that. And it gives us a, a wide range of verbs we can use. Including kill, murder, um, assault, um, attack, uh, whatever we want to say, really. But we might put those in on the dragon here as its interactions. Uh, we've got look, move, and then we've got some magic words, and we've got take, which is to take items. Okay, so um, let's let's create uh, a new class in here. So let's add a class called. Um, we'll call this yes. Okay, and this class has got to be public, and it's going to inherit, or it's going to extend um, the base adventure command, which is this one here. Okay, and we need a con a constructor for that. So 
so that's going to be a public uh, yes and oops yes and this has got to take in a, a read only adventure game uh, read only uh, read only lowercase okay, so only um, add venture game so let's see if we can find the namespace for that which is that interface there and that's going to be a game and it needs to take um, some params and I can't quite remember what all the params are so let's go and have a look over it uh, here so it's going to take in this little lot here, a string of verbs basically, a parameter string of verbs. Um, so let's move that across here. So that's our constructor. We don't actually need to, need to provide any um, anything inside that constructor, we just need that. So that we call in the base um, constructor really. Uh, Okay, so we just need to implement this, implement the abstract class. And the abstract class basically has a single method, which is invoke, which is to invoke the command. Okay, so um, it's going to take in um, uh, the player object, and it's going to take in some event, event args, which contain the, um, the, the, the command, really. Um, or the parameters to the yes command. And there's going to be no parameters in this case. You're going to say yes or no. Um, Qmacro99, hello. I thought I'd pop in to say hello. I've just finished my stream and have a few minutes before your next meeting. Cheers. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Qmacro. I do um, I do follow your adventures on uh, Twitter. Uh, I haven't exactly caught one of your streams yet, but um, yeah, I do follow what you're doing. You, you do stream an awful lot. Um, do you do that as part of your job, or is that just all still um, spare time stuff? Key macro. Um, and thanks for joining the stream. It's uh, very, very good of you to, to to arrive, even if it's only briefly. Do appreciate that. Okay, so um, so we need to do something in here. So when we say yes, so um, what I'm thinking is on the dragon, as well as having this kill interaction we have a yes and no interaction so that when people say yes we call the yes interaction on the dragon and then that kind of does whatever whatever we want really whatever the yes says so um so let's think um so we want to we want some new we want some new things um so what we're going to do? Um, let's let's copy this up and let's actually add the kill, slay, murder. Let's add attack to that list of verbs. So we've got a bit more things we can do. You stream at least once a week, you macro. Sometimes twice, but only for an hour at a time. Well, that's that's pretty good. Um, you do you do seem to stream more than that, uh, as far as I can tell. But um, Maybe that you do also lots of conference work and stuff like that. So I do say I do keep tabs on you over Twitter, and it's uh, you seem quite busy. Okay, um, so we've added our kill command. Now, if the player says yes, uh, if the player says yes, we need to do something. So uh, player says yes. And um, player says no. So what we need is a new, a new interaction, a yes interaction. So what we'll do is say uh, yes is equal to a new um, item interaction. So the dragon is counting as an item here, even though it's a creature. It's just an item in the game. Um, we pass in the game. And we're going to say just yes. This is a yes interaction. And then we're going to say, um, so if you say yes, then um, it's going to say, and an amazing feat of bravery, you kill the dragon with your bare hands. Then it's going to remove the dragon from the location. It's going to add a dead dragon to the location. 
it's going to remove the dead end we've got because the dragon's blocking our way and it's going to add a new move which will open up access to the north because if we if we go over to our map you'll see this is where we are here in the secret northeast canyon with the dragon sitting on its carpet and the carpet's the stuff we're going to take off it and um, the dragon basically as you come in this way the dragon is blocking the exit out there and so um, we need to remove this blockage and allow access into the north secret north south um, canyon so that's what this um, interaction will do it's going to say add a move to the north which is uh, alias by north or n okay and it's going to add a location at north south canyon to the location at northeast canyon so that should do that so we're going to add that as a yes interaction to there the player says no so we're going to need something very similar so we're going to need a no interaction oops me. Uh, there we go so this is going to be a no interaction and it will be just a command no and we're going to we're not going to actually uh, invoke the uh, interaction directly um, we're going to use the yes and no commands to do that okay so um, so once again we need to give it a message so we'll just copy that message there and it's going to say uh, I don't blame you or something uh, it's going to say something I don't I don't I don't blame you So if you say if you say kill dragon, it says you can do that with your bare hands. You say no, and it's I don't blame you. Okay, and then um, we need to add that interaction. That's really the end of what's got to happen. Okay. So there we are. We've got our basic interactions, and um, I can already think of a problem here that. Um, that if you just say yes dragon if you just say yes when you're in the presence of the dragon it will remove the dragon and if you say no it'll say i don't blame it doesn't make a lot of sense but let's work that bit out um after we've got yes and no built so let's go back to yes so we're going to have an um we're going to have to invoke the yes interaction here okay so let's um let's lose that so what we can do um we can set a variable uh, did process set that to false to begin with and then we can have um if not did process and then we're going to say something so we have to say player that's player dot um, chat client so it's in the center of the chat client that the that the player is using uh, which it knows about the player has that as a, as a instance of the chat client that uh, the player is using Cody Beard funny you started streaming the game this game it's game dev week, is it? Oh, right. You, what what um, game are you working on, uh, Coded Beer? Was it a rocket game or a space game? I can't remember. I think you did mention something about it in in Discord. So the chat client and uh, chat client has a post direct message on it, and we're going to post a direct message to the player, and it's going to say something like, um, "I'm not sure." what you mean okay so um so let's just copy the whole of this command and create a no command at the same time so uh, if you say no it's basically going to say the same thing and let's push this over to its own class um 
and the way we register our commands that are available to us um, is in our command registry, which is over here. Okay, so hello there, um, Rangin. Great, good to see you. You're still in work, but um, yeah, thanks for saying hi and just have me on in the background, and um, that'll be great. Um, oh yes, so it is a space game, uh, Coded Beard. That's good. You run into a, a bug that had you um, stumped for ages. Eventually worked it out. Type confusion bug. That's, they're, not, they're nasty, aren't they? Uh, using oh, you running for some kind of scripting? Oh, we lure scripts into C sharp. Oh, this is this is pure dot uh, net and C sharp. So I haven't got that kind of scripting uh, in here. Um, and it, it to be honest, it's a it's a project which is kind of growing and growing in scope. I'm adding more and more features. Some of these you could say they're kind of yaggy, yagny kind of things. But um, no, I think. A lot of the things ideas I've got, especially for this stream, I think are going to be generically useful. Um, so we do need to cope with this this issue we, we're going to have that saying yes or no in the presence of a dragon uh, is going to um, it's going to give the kind of secret away basically. So if you didn't went around just saying yes, it could, it will have unintended um, consequences. You've got to actually say kill dragon and then answer the question that comes back: Are you sure? With your bare hands. Okay, so um, the way we register adventure game commands is is very different to how we register commands for the bot. So the bot uses reflection to search through the core assembly here for um, four classes which implement I command, and that's kind of automated. So you add a command and it goes ahead. For the adventure game, we can't use that because we don't want these uh, these um, commands becoming available outside of um, playing the game um, so um, we're gonna we, this is how we do it so we have basically a list of the commands that you can use and it's a short list because um, because of the use of interaction so we haven't got a huge long list of commands there's no kind of um, fill command no unlock command they're all they're all categorized interactions and there's lots and lots of interactions um, which uh, are represented by basically state changes so they state they change the state or the environment of the game uh, and that's what an interaction does so it changes the environment or it changes an item or it changes the player in some way uh, it doesn't actually um, work in the same way as these kind of base commands do so we're going to need to add a yes and a no in here so uh, oh yes equals a new yes and that's going to take in a game and then as you remember it the yes command as it all commands takes in a a a, uh, a param of verbs so these are all the different kind of aliases for the verbs rambling it's got a oh, so, okay rambling it's just saying hi yeah okay uh so cody bid says the lewis stuff is to allow it to be moddable right okay but it makes debugging a bit of a pain. Yeah, I'm not intending this to be modelable. So if you want to, if you want to mod this, then yeah, download the code and change it. Really, um, it is. You can plug different dungeons in. So um, let me just finish this piece of code first, and I'll show you that. Um, so we'll have an alias of just Y as well. So you don't have to type in the word yes. And then we need to add it to our list. And then we'll just do the same for the no command. Uh, so yeah, no. And that is an instance of no. And n. And we just pop no down here. And we'll give this a run. Um, it won't, obviously all it'll do is say, I don't, I'm not sure what you mean, but at least it proved that yes and no are actually now commands. Um, as I was saying about plugging your own dungeons in we have a, a dungeon class um, which basically tries to find the starting location within a dungeon which is kind of passed in um, and the dungeon for colossal cave is this one here so um, we'll probably go through this this is using a reflection again to find um, applicable um, dungeons um, so we might go through this at some point but it does mean that there's, it's quite abstracted out. We've got uh, the Castle Cave is instance of um, it implements the I Dungeon Builder, and the Dungeon um, implements the I Dungeon interface. And this is how we kind of use 
these interfaces and the polymorphism to you can plug your own dungeons in um it's a fair amount of work in doing such a thing but you can do that all a dungeon is is a set of locations uh, and items and, and things like that um and and um yeah items and locations really so it's possible to do all that so that's our adventure command registry let's run this up and we sh at the moment yes or no now we'll, we'll just do a bit of tidying get rid of these unnecessary using so yes and no uh, there we go like that uh, let's run it up and it's just basically we're going to say yes or no and it's going to just um come back with i'm not sure what you mean and then we'll add the functionality in to actually um, invoke those interactions with the dragon okay so let's bring uh what should we have we'll bring slack across i think uh yeah here's slack I remember last time i had slack wasn't working properly um you could do general commands but it wasn't working with um our direct messages i've sorted that out off stream it's simply um i wasn't adding the direct messages to the list of uh, valid channels in slack which was a new feature I, i'd added recently um basically to cope with um twitch twitch and uh, discord okay so in order to start our game we need to type the exclamation point adv command adventure and we've joined the adventure and now you can see alpha bot is talking to me i've got two direct messages sent to me and and basically they say welcome to adventure use help command blah 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 and we have got our um, starting location at the um, end of a road in front of a small brick building and um here we can say now at the moment you have to say adv in front of every command and i'm desperately trying to think of a way that you don't have to do that uh, but i can't think of one at the moment so if we say adv say yes it's going to say that and and then We'll just do the abbreviation N for no. I'm not sure what you mean. So that's actually um, means that our um, our commands are wired up, and now we need to kind of extend the functionality. So let's just move that off screen and stop the bot. Okay. So um, so what do we want to do? We want to actually um, Invocation, uh, invocation of um, interactions mean we're actually interacting with an item. We don't, we don't interact with the um, locations themselves at the moment. There's no way of doing that. But interaction with, with items or using an item can change the environment. So we need to know whether there's any items at the current location at all. Um, and um, we can do that by um, on the player object that uh, keeps track of its current location so we know where we are within the colossal caves um, so this um, this object here um, is of type um, i adventure location as you can see by this um, this piece of text here so we've got properties on a, a location which is are there any items in the location and so if there are any items at the location in this case we're going to be obviously we're hoping to find a dragon at this location um, oh, my typing is really up to scratch today isn't it there's square brackets rather than curly braces um okay so we need to bring in link by the look of it yeah so if there's any items at our current lake location let's let's grab them we may be able to tidy this code up and kind of linkify it or something at some point um we'll grab the item um grab the items so that's basically going to be this and we can do this so we can debug it if we run into trouble with this this interaction um and then for each um item in items Um, um if the item dot so what have we got on item so we should have interactions on that which we do and we should have 
uh, and we, if there's any interactions defined, um, and um, um, we can put a lambda on here. So we've got an is match. Now, any of those match yes interactions. So remember on Dragon we created a yes interaction and a no interaction. And we've got this one here, which is um, this is the kill, kill, slay, murder, attack, assault, whatever. So if we find one of those, then we want to invoke that interaction. Um, and invoking the interaction returns a boolean to say whether it, it actually was successful or not, or worked or not. Kimako99, thanks for dropping in. Uh, um, best of luck with your meeting, and uh, we'll see you see you again sometime. I hope. Um, so did process. This says whether it processed or processed successfully or not. Uh, and that is going to be um, item uh, dot interact dot invoke. Uh, and on in evoke. Um, no, that's just interact, not invoke. So if we go back to our uh, dragon, then it's interact. So it takes in the verb that we want to match on, and then takes an instance of the player. So we can talk to the player. We can do all kinds of things with the player inside our interaction. Um, so yes, this is going to be um, the yes interaction. So we're making sure there is one. And if there is, we invoke it and send the player object in there as well. Okay, so that should cause whatever we say, whatever interaction we've got in the yes category, should then fire on the dragon. And um, we can basically copy all of this, copy it over into no, and just change this to no. And that should complete our no command. All yes and no is going to do, it's not going to do anything if there's no items in the in the in the area, or there's no uh, interactions of the correct correct type on the item. It's going to save this. Otherwise, it's going to actually do the interaction. The Michael Jolly, hello, welcome. Good to see you. I hope you hope you're well. Um, I've got, I think I've got OBS Studio all kind of uh, hooked up now. As you can see at the top here, I've got my follower goal uh, gauge working. I believe I've got um, interactions, not interactions, um, to 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 uh, invoke in this. Um, I've got um, the alerts box working, and I can see that um, I'm getting some kind of um, alerts coming up in. Um, in the chat, which are all in, encased in red, which is Nightbot in there, and I think Cloudbot's in there as well. So this is this is OBS. Yes. The only difference is I haven't got at the bottom here uh, of the screen um, down here somewhere. Um, you can't see, but in this area down here, there's usually um, the kind of uh, new follower, new subscriber, new cheer. Um, so I'm hoping to get that kind of sorted out. I've got stream labels. Uh, application downloaded and installed and working. It's running at the moment, um, but I haven't sat down with the graphics and, and kind of redone those because um, it, it just ran out of time really. Um, but yeah, but yeah, OBS and thanks for the help and, for you and, and from um, from Brendan to actually get me back on track with OBS because it was somewhat embarrassing on um, on Monday evening um, to not be able to respond to. Um, things that were happening uh, over in chat when I had a couple of follows and some bits and things like that that I just didn't notice. I did notice eventually, I think, but it took a while. Okay, so let's save those. Um, so we've got our yes and no commands. I think this should be sufficient, but we need to do a bit more wiring up here. So we've got our dragon. Um, so when we do a kill, so with our dragon, we need to actually process um, the um, yes or no commands as well, don't we? 
Um, okay. So we don't want to just process kill. We want to process all interactions because there's now three interactions defined for this um, for this uh, this dragon. So we're going to do all of them. Well, that leads us into the problem, as I say, that basically if you say yes or no, then it's going to then the yes or no commands will invoke this loop and it'll go through and do all the registered actions. Um okay. Let's run it and see what happens, shall we? Let's run it and so we need to um we're gonna need to get to the right location. So I'll just bring the map up again. Um close that down. So here's the map. Um, we're going to start up here uh, outside the little brick building at the end of the road and we are going to have to kind of come all the way down here and go through all this malarkey and then blah 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 so um, we've got some shortcuts that we can take if you're with us on um, on uh, on Monday uh, there are some magic words which basically will teleport us around the dungeon um, and they're very helpful for um, for debugging and testing um, so instead of having to go all this way, all this way, we're going to do some shortcuts. So let's start up um, the dungeon, and we'll just take a quick run in and try and get to the dragon, and we'll see what happens with the dragon. Okay. So we'll use Slack again, I think, as our client. A bit later on, if we do get onto the multiplayer parts, we'll start using both Slack and Discord at the same time. Um, so I'm over in general. I'm going to play adventure. There we go. So we now got our messages here. So um, we're going to need a light. So we're going to go into the root, into the brick building. So if I um, if I type look, ADV look you'll see that we're standing uh, outside a brick building. And we, I know that inside the brick building there's some lamps. So let's go and get one of those. Um, uh, different directions. Um, we've got north, south, east, west, of course, up, down. But there's also some um, variants on that. So um, for each location, you can actually have unique um, verbs or unique nouns which uh, indicate directions. So I'll come show you that at some point. But we can say go in here. And we're going to go into the building. So we're in the small building. Uh, we're going to take a lamp. Okay, we've got the lamp. We're going to light the lamp. So light is um, an interaction with the lamp. So light lamp. So the lamp's no lit. And now we can use our first magic word, which is X, Y, Z, Z, Y. X, Y, Z, Z, Y, yep. And we're going to now magically be transported. So we are now, um, if we look around, we're, um, we're in a debris room. Okay, so we're in a, um, we're actually below ground in the dark. We've got our lamp going. We're in a low passage. There's cobbles here. There's a cryptic note, X, Y, Z, Z, Y, scrawled on the wall. And there's a rusty um, black rod on the ground. Now, um, if just I don't want to keep going through this, but if, if you've kind of followed on on Monday, but there might be some people who don't who, who don't know it. But we're now in the debris room here, and in the cobble crawl, which is uh, one room to that east, is a cage, and we're going to need that cage because there's there's a bird a bit later on, and if you can see the bird there, and we need the bird to get past um, a snake, which is kind of guardian. Um, Guardian, the Hall of the Mountain King down here. You can see there's a snake there. And we need to get to this room here. So we need to pass through the Hall of the Mountain King to get there. And the snake's kind of blocking the way. So we need the bird, which is going to kill the snake. And we need the cage to catch the bird. So this is a kind of, obviously, you, you, you know text adventures. This is the um, the logic of text adventures. And this is, these are fairly simple puzzles to start with. And they get a bit more complicated as you go through. So we're now here. So we need to go... Um, we need to go east to pick up the cage. So uh, take cage. Got the cage. Um, now we need to go 
west young man and go west and we'll go canyon and now we should be in the bird chamber so if we um we'll look here you can see there's a bird in here and we need to take the bird now we do need to try and alias that to catch bird at some point but that's a slightly because take is a core command um we may it's not an interaction we may be able to do something to, to actually achieve a catch okay so we now got the bird um if i bring the map up again we are, are now in this bird chamber here and we've got to get all the way to the hall of the mountain king uh, but there's a shortcut we can take so if we teleport um back to this um to the um to the brick building here we can then teleport from there to y2 um which is this uh this room here which is not far from where we want to go there's a magic word on that one as well you can see it written here it's called plu and that's the magic word to teleport that in that direction so let's let's give that a go um so um i don't think i can shouldn't be able to do this yeah nothing happens so you need to be in the right location so we need to go east so i'm glad that worked because I, I thought I'd, I'd set that up you need to be in the right place before you can do the the magic words uh, we're now in the debris room which is where x y z z y is um x y z z y and let's go back to the brick builds which uh x y z z y now we should be teleported back to the brick building and i'll just check where we are there do apologize for the bad typing yeah we're back at the brick building and if we now do um clue which is the magic word to get us to y2 then we should be at y2 okay we're at y2 which is um a large room with a, a y2 scrawled on a on a rock in the center of the room um, and that means we're here so if we now head south we should come into the hall of the mountain king we need to dispose of the snake and then we need to go southwest into the secret canyons and the southwest here not only is it kind of probably one of the few places um, in the dungeon where you can go in between north south east west and up and down it's also um it's got um, a random number generator on that that's only one in three chance of finding the secret passage even if you know it's there so we're going to have to kind of have several goes at going southwest until we get through. We might be lucky first time, but I doubt it. Okay. So let's go back. Um, I'll just lower that. Okay, so now Y2, we need to go south. Another passage. And go south again. And we're at the Hall of Mountain King. So if we have a look here, we see that there's a large, vicious-looking snake barring our way. Um, so we need to dispose of that and the way we dispose of that is using the birds so if we say free bird gee if michael jolly's um still in chat um i'd like to put a request in for your next stream when you pull your guitar out could you do a rendition of free bird by leonard skinner please that'd be really nice uh, so we free the bird and the bot darts out and kills the snake okay that's good so now we can try and uh, move to the, to the secret passage so this might take a little while so we want to go southwest and we can't southwest no go southwest now we're in we've made it into the secret canyon so let's have a look around you can see we're in a tight um a tight canyon uh if you go down you might not be getting back up so um there are certain features of the secret canyon we haven't actually um built in yet but one of them is a one-way direction so we're going to have to say that if you go down then if you go down you can't get back up again so we haven't coded any of that yet um but you know there's awful lot of rooms left to go including um there's an, another maze we've got a maze in here at the moment there's another maze we need to build 
um, which we may or not may or may not build actually i'm not sure if we we, we probably should do but um yeah so we've got the twisty turny the maze of twisty turny passages all alike and there's another maze um, in the dungeon which is the maze of twisty turny passages all different um but mazes aren't that fun to be perfectly honest with unless you know the secret of transferring them and and we haven't got um we haven't got wandering monsters yet so there's a, a nasty little dwarf that wanders around and in the in the um, maze the passages are all alike maze there should be a pirate who steals your treasure um, and we haven't got those implemented because I currently I'll still want to work it, think about how we can actually do wandering monsters but that shouldn't be too much of a problem so now we're going to go um, we're going to go west okay we're still in the secret canyon well, let's have a look here and here we are the dragon so there's a huge dragon barring your way so the dragon is sprawled out on an expensive looking persian rug lying there doing it lying here so this is where uh, we can kill the dragon so if we say add kill dragon it says quite rightly do you want to use your bare hands so if we just go back to the dragon code we have run the kill interaction okay here and it's come through and it's, it's just printed out this piece of text and that should be the end of it it shouldn't do anything else it's going to ask us uh, now yes or no if we say yes it should run the yes interaction if we say no it should run the no interaction in fact we won't do look we've made a mistake here well let's run the yes interaction um here yeah, that's going to cause a problem isn't it anyway let's see what happens um it's going to it's going to blow up something rotten because i made that mistake there look well let's try it anyway uh so we're going to say rbs okay and we've crashed we've crashed because there's too many um oh collection modified hmm okay Well, we'll sort that out so i'm afraid i'm sorry but we've done through all that stuff at least we've been through once and i won't have to explain it um quite because it's detail michael jolly you didn't respond to my request for free bird so i don't suppose you're actually in chat and um, the other, other one would be bohemian rhapsody i think you can play that one for me um where were we so we was in the dragon and we need to change that to a no don't we but um I think I guess we, we can probably explain the problem that this has got in that we said kill dragon and it said this it said you want to use your bare hands but if you happen to say yes in that location where there was a dragon which had a yes interaction on it it will then run this and kill the dragon so you could be sat go into that room and say yes and the dragon will be killed and you would think well what's going on so in order to prevent that we need to make sure that the player has issued the kill command on the dragon before we allow the yes or no to have any effect so if you just say yes or no in that location it'll, the, the, the game will just respond i'm not sure what you mean it's only when you ask that's a direct question that we want it to respond so um So how are we going to do that? Well, um, I've just got some notes here which I kind of made quickly made, and um, and the idea I had was to add some state, some um, some state to the to items in the dungeon, which are basically um, the state is set by a player. So individual players can set different states on different items. It will keep track of which player has that state on that item. So that if I come along and I say kill dragon, we will mark the dragon that I intend to kill the dragon. But if you come along and we're both there together, um, then you can't say when it, when, it, when it comes back to me and says, do you want to use your bare hands? Um, you can't say yes because you didn't first issue the kill command. So you've got to try and kill the dragon as well. Uh, the dragon in fact is um, one of these objects which is um, will be there for everyone so it isn't a unique item 
some items in the game are unique uh, in which there's only a singleton so that if i open a if I say there's a locked door and i open it when you come along the door will be open but things like the um the dragon and the snake um if you even if we're in the same room together there'll be two kind of two snakes one for you and one for me and you'll have to kill your own snake otherwise you just follow someone through the dungeon and you won't you know hoover up the treasure and you won't have any challenges so we need to have some kind of state um kept on items um so let's pop over um let's have a look at items so we've got items here um and there is uh there's an adventure item yeah adventure item that's location sorry about that uh adventure item okay so these are all the um the properties that live on and some methods as well which live on the um the abstract class um adventure item and there's an adventure item interface which um, this implements so we need to go to that and we're going to add onto here um so what's it going to be it's going to be uh so we want a dictionary because we want different states for different players a dictionary of a string because the user id is a string and then we could have it's potential is that for each item could have many different states that you put on the on the item so for example if we've got if we decided to implement a combat system it could be that we could say there were hit points or damage points and uh, you know player one dealt 10 damage and player two dealt five damage so we could track their damage separately so let's make this a, a list of string and we'll keep um the state will just be a, a string and we'll call it um player item state uh player item state player item state is that yes that sounds okay um and we'll get and set that player item state naming things is hard as everyone says on, on stream but i think player item state sounds okay uh, so on our adventure item we need to implement that we now got player item state here and we'll have a get set on there and um let's just default that to a new dictionary of that okay so that's our abstract class and our um, and our interface sorted so dragon um dragon extends adventure items so we've now got that on here Okay, so what we basically want to say is something along the lines of um what do we want to say so we only want to do yes or no if the players initially uh, issued the kill interaction command onto the dragon so we want to say something along the lines of um uh so interactions interaction dot verbs dot contains so it contains the word kill so it doesn't matter if we say murder or assault or attack or whatever as long as one of the verbs which we've defined for the interaction is kill which is kind of default um, not the default but the first one the one, the one that we, we're kind of testing with um, if the interaction contains that verb um, and 
Um, no, no, that's not right. If the interaction contains yes, um, or the interaction interaction dot verbs dot contains no. So if we said yes or no, so let's just put some probably not needed brackets around that. But I like to I like to have brackets around my um, my or statement there. So if it's a yes or a no, and um, and what's the, so we want to look in the state and see if we've allocated the kill state as a, as a player to the dragon. So um, so uh, oh, so we need we need to kind of have a command to find out if the state is in there. So what we want to write is something like um, not has state and then pass in the player and the word kill. So if that's not true, then we need to return false. So um, yeah, so if we enter, if we have issued yes or no, but the dragon hasn't been told to be, it's going to be killed. We haven't issued the kill command on the dragon. Uh, then, um, then we want to return false and not actually not interact. Okay. So has state's got to be a um, got to be a method we add to our interface, doesn't it? So let's go back to our interfaces and adventure item. And we need basically something very similar to is match. It's going to be um, has state, and we're going to pass in um, an I adventure player, and a um, Um, and a verb, and a verb, yeah. The has state has then got to inspect um, our dictionary and make sure it's in that 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 verb is in that dictionary. Um, Brendonius, welcome. Good to see you. Uh, yeah, so we're um, we're 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 busy trying to kill a dragon. So um, we're near, we're getting there actually. Um, had, had to add a, quite a few new concepts to the game. Um, so yeah, so we're adding the idea of um, player dependent state onto items. Um, and the way I'm envisioning this working is that we have this dictionary um, of string and list of string. And so the string will represent the player's user ID. And the list of strings will be a number of different states which we can uh, Attached to the item, which belong, which were inflicted or, or imposed on the item by the player. So it's kind of multi-user. Um, and at the moment we've got this idea of, a, of the, the kill state. So um, the kill state is where we say kill dragon, and we need to kind of give the dragon that state um, while we ask the question: Are you sure you want to do it with your bare hands or not? Okay, so that's our interface set up with that. So let's go to the um, the abstract class, which is adventure item. It's just, it's just living down here with other abstract classes. Um, and let's implement that interface. Um, and this is going this is going to live on the um, the abstract class, and so we don't have we don't actually have to bother implementing it in all the different um, extensions of the class so every class every every adventure item will have this class on it so we just we've added it kind of globally now okay so let's implement this so we do it in the simplest way possible so if um if um 
player item state dot contains the key oops and the key is going to be um the player id uh so if that if the player has a state in there then um get the states so that's going to be um player item state and we'll just use that key because we know it's in there and then we'll say um if um states dot contains um verb turn true uh, else up at the bottom and return let's try a code rush Oh, there we go. Yeah, so I'm getting start, starting to get used to some of these little um, mini kind of shortcuts which are in, in Code Rush. Turn false. Okay, so that's has state. So let's just quickly check it. So that we're going to pass in the player and the verb we're going to look at, or the state. It's, it's going to be state, isn't it? Really, not verb, because it might not be a verb. It might be like ten hit points of damage done. So let's let's just fix that up. We get the names of these things correct. So here we had verb that's state. So we're checking for a state. So if I'm passing the state, so if the player has any states on the object at all, grab the states, list of states. So this is a list. And then if those list of states contains the state we're after, then return true, otherwise false. That seems correct. Okay, so here we, we're looking if we if we've give issued a yes or a no. Uh, and the player doesn't have that state, then just ignore, don't process, otherwise process the yes or the no. And if it's a kill, if we say kill, it is forced to and does the kill act interaction. Okay, so we, now we need to set the state. So we need, so, okay, so this is where it gets a little bit more interesting, I guess. Um, Interactions. So interactions. Um, yeah, item interaction is a is basically a list uh, of registered interactions, and those are basically instances of um, classes, uh, which um, which either print information out to the screen, i.e., uh, display displays information, or they affect the environment in some way. So here we have a remove from location. So it's going to remove an item from the location. It's going to remove this item from the location. We have an add to location. We can so we can add items. So we get in this case when we kill the dragon, we're going to add a dead dragon to the location, having first removed the live dragon. Um, and then we're going to yeah, as I said before, then we're going to remove a destination, which is the the dead end destination, and we're going to add some new moves. The list of moves we're going to add uh, the ability to go north because the dragon blocks north. So we need a new one of these. Okay. So I think I know roughly where we're going now. So here's our interactions. So there's a number of them. We've got activate item, add moves, add player status. So add player status is an interesting one. I forgot about that. So that's yeah. So that's that's going to that's going to come into play i think quite soon um there are certain rooms which should inflict a status onto players um one of those status being dead so if you fall into a pit um you need to put the status of dead on there and end the game so i haven't got that actually done at the moment but there's other statuses which would be points um, and I'm wondering if we mean maybe we'll keep points separate. Player status seems to be it is a list. It's a list of status statuses. Mm. Yeah, I think points have to be separate. But certainly dead or 
exhausted or hungry or thirsty. These are the kind of states that the game's got to Im got to impose on people. Um, and so we don't have any way of doing that at the moment, or anywhere where that actually happens. Okay, so we're going to need to add some more interactions. Uh, we've got close, open, display, display for location, unlock, update item names. So we can change the name of items. So, for example, um, one example of changing the name of item is lamp to a lit lamp. Um, so we do use that one. So we need a new one of these. Um, let's let's create a new class. Um, we're going to call it, going to call it add items. Add 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 uh, player item state. Yeah, and a player item state. So this is going to add some kind of state to the um, to the object. Okay, let's have a look what uh, these implement. So they they I they implement the I action interface. So let's inherit that. Implement that, and let's uh, come on do that. Let's implement that interface so that's got a do command on it a do method it re receives the player and the item and then it does something with that okay Okay, so when we we need we need a constructor on this. So public um, add player item state, um, and what we want to be able to pass into there is the state that we want to impose. So we can't pass it in the do. The do is just going to actually actually do the adding of the state. We need to set it up, and then. So if you go, we go back to um, I don't know um, the dragon again. You can see what we do. We 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 create an instance uh, of the class, and this is the message. And then down here, we actually do each interaction. So the do is what prints the message out, but we define the message in the constructor. We want to do something very similar. So we want to take um, a string of the state in the constructor. And we're going to say state equals state and um, we will implement that okay so we've got our state and here so um, we want to look at the item we've got so if the item dot um, so what do we want to do have we already got okay so uh item player item state if that contains key of player player id then we've already got the player the player already has some states set up in the um in the in the dictionary so what we want to do then is what we want to add it don't we um, so we want to make sure it's not in there already if it's in there already we need to simply ignore the um, add player item state interaction so um, our states is going to be equal to um, item dot Player item state, and then just get from the key is player dot id, um, and if we all spell that right, it'd be happier. And then we can say um, if states, if not states. What contains um, 
state we tried to set and so you can see we can't pass the state in on the do but we can we passed it on the constructor so so if it contains doesn't contain the state then we need to um add that state in okay um okay but if so if it does it already contains the state we, we just drop out if the player isn't in there already so the place is the first state that the, the, the players inflicted on the creature or the item or whatever um, in that case we want to say item dot player item state dot um, add and this is the dictionary so player ID and then a new list string and um, we want to add in um, state state and we need to return a boolean and we can just return true Yeah, I think that should be okay. Well, no, we need to. We're going to need to check that that. No, I think that should be okay. That should be all right. I don't think we need. Um, I'm just going to have a look at some other interactions and see if I do return false. If I activate item, it just returns true. Um, about open that does return false if it's locked and you haven't got the key i think it's okay because the only reason it's going to actually not do anything is if it's already in there we don't care if it's already in there that's, so that's just to prevent duplicates so i think that's okay so what we can do now we can go over to our dragon here and as part of when 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 we we say kill dragon or slay dragon or murder dragon or whatever as part of this as well as printing out that message to the to the user we need to give um the dragon that state so kill dot um registered interactions dot add and we're going to add in a new um Add player item state, and the state is going to be kill. Okay. Okay. So let's um, let's try this out and see if it actually works in in practice. It's a bit theoretical at the moment, isn't it? Let's pop a breakpoint here. We'll run the run the game. Um, it'll take me it's a little while to actually get to um, the location where we can test. But pardon me, I'll run that through as quickly as we can. Okay. Um, let's bring up Slack. Uh, let's get into the game. So play the play the adventure game. Um, we've got our messages from Alphabot. Um, so we want to go. So I'll go as quick as I can. I'm going to go into the building. And we're going to take a lamp. I'm going to light the lamp. We're going to issue the magic word X, Y, Z, Z, Y. Uh, I'm going to appear inside the caves. We're going to go east. Here we're going to take the cage. There's an old wicker cage lying here. I just happen to know I've done this so, so often. We've got the cage, and now we're going to go uh, to the west and get the bird. Uh, so we're squirming through the debris room. Go west again. Look at the canyon. 
go west to the bird chamber. Gonna take the bird. So just in case you didn't know, the, if we um, look at our inventory, the bird is now um, inside the cage and it's still, ching, uh, still uh, chirping. Uh, so now we need to we need to go back to the brick building. So go east twice, I believe, into the debut room. Then we can go X, Y, Z, Z, Y again. To reappear back at the brick building, which we can see we are. There's another command now, magic word, which will take us to a room called Y2. Let's make sure we're there. We are in Y2, and now we can go south. Oops, go south. I should probably alias go, really, shouldn't I? To set them up to the directions of them, the cardinal directions, if that's possible. Go south, go south. So we're in the Hall of the Mountain King. There's a giant snake here. Okay, and then we're going to release the bird. We didn't get a reply from Michael Jolly. He must have. He must be a lurking or have, or have, have gone. Or gone. So he's not going to sing um, free bird for me. Uh, so we've killed the snake, and now we need to go into the secret passage, uh, which is a random. Oh, we've got there first time, which is good. And now we need to go to the west. Oops. West. Um, I can't remember if we if we're in the right room at the moment. Yeah, we are. So there's the dragon. So the dragon blocking our way, sitting on its rug. So if we say um, add kill dragon, we hit here. So um, our interaction, uh, there's four verbs and it's kill is the, is the word we've used so it's not yes or no so we should skip over this and let's um, uh, and what's the best thing to do Um, okay, um, but, but, but this is autos. Um, let's create a watch here, and it's going to be um, uh, item state okay so we now got a watch on that and it's got nothing in it at the moment so we're now going to step so we should step over this return false which we do let's pop our breakpoint here continue and we've added a state look that's good so um the state is for my username that's my slack user and the value is kill. So that bit's worked. So we've added our state. Um, let's continue that then. And now it's come back and said, do you want to use your bare hands? So if we say, um, if we say no, we should hit this. Now it should, it should pop into here. So it should say, well, do we have uh, any state of player kill we do have so if we step over that it should miss, miss it again which it does and then if we continue it says I don't blame you and we continue okay and here's where there's a problem if we now say yes it can pop into here and it kills the dragon and we've actually crashed out here again as well in our, um, in our yes command. 
Okay, so that's the problem. We need to remove that state. So if someone says no, we need to remove the state that we assigned. So that player state of kill needs to be got rid of um, somehow. So let's how, let, we need a new, we need an equivalent of this, um, which is going to be remove player item state. Okay, um, let's do that then. Uh, what we'll do is copy this. So this is going to be remove. Um, remove. Um, and we'll just push that across to its own class, its own file rather. Okay. Um so remove. So it's basically this time we're going to remove the state from the it's oh, still a nice little type refactor for me there. Look, it's put a fat arrow. He's done that as well, lovely. Okay. Um Okay, so basically It's going to be the same as this. So if the player, um, if the player's in the in the dictionary, then get the state. And if the state is in there, then remove the state. Um, else, don't bother doing it at all, actually. And we can still return true because if we say remove the state and it's not there, the effect is still the same. The state is no longer in there. Okay, that, that seems to make sense. Okay, so um, um, so if we say yes, we want to remove the state. If we say no, we want to remove the state, don't we? Um, yeah. So saying yes or no, if we say yes, we're going to kill the dragon anyway because it's that's the kind of that's the um I was gonna say puzzle but that's the, the the mad thing. Uh so we're going to pass in a new remove player item state. Um we're gonna remove the kill state and we're gonna do the same if they say no, remembering to update the no there. Okay, I think that's all we need to do. So that's quite good. I've added a new concept of item, of player item state to the game. To solve this yes no problem, which initially seemed like it wasn't going to be anything to do with state, but let's just give that a go now, make sure that um, it's going to work, and see if we've still got that problem with that um, that collection being um, modified. So we'll quickly run through it again, um, so we can see we killed killed the uh, killed the dragon there, but that was by saying the wrong command. Okay, so I'll run through really quickly now. Um, then we're going to do uh, x, y, z, z, y. Going to go east, take the cage. Go west. Go west. Um, take the bird. Go east again. Go east. X, Y, Z, Z, Y. 
and then the other magic word we've got which is blue so we now at y2 and i'm going to go south south and we're going to free the bird and we're going to try and go southwest and we're in the secret canyon looky going to go west we're going to look we're going to uh, add kill dragon okay so we skip over that we should see we've got our player state now we've got um, kill added under my username so that's good so now it's come back and said do you want to kill the dragon do you want to use your bare hands if we say and no it should then remove that state so let's just run that through uh, it has removed the state you can see the value here is now got a count of zero and it says back here i don't blame you and we go back here and we kill the dragon again and what's happened oh we're stuck on a breakpoint Okay, I think we can remove these breakpoints possibly, and then we'll keep them there just for now. Um, so you have bare hands, and yes, run that through, and yes, the state's been removed, and we can now definitely get rid of those breakpoints and continue. And we hit this problem again, so we've got to fix this. Collection was modified, okay. So the so the item was modified. Okay, I think the basics working. So we need to figure out now is this bit item in items. So is it because when we interacted it removed the item? Um, so let's just um, to list that, shall we? And that should sort that problem out because now we're dealing with our, our own items and our own item here. So that should sort that out, uh, I believe. So we need to do the same to the no command. Uh, got to list that as well. Okay, and there was a refactoring available to us here. So let's um, so it's co convert to link. Let's see what the link looks like. Oh, I don't like that that link, but uh, I wonder if we can use the other form of link. I don't like this form of link. I'm going to put it back. I like to use the extension method things. Script it. It's, it is like a script. We do have like a script for your and, and welcome to the stream, by the way. So the scripts um, um, live on the items, and basically they're these interactions. So the script is basically saying, um, if you say yes, then uh, remove this state from the monster, um, display some text, remove the monster from location, add a dead monster to location. And unblock the room basically because the monster blocks the room. So it is like a script, but it all keeps it within um, within C sharp, which was the aim of the aim of the um, of the exercise to write this game. Actually, it wasn't it wasn't to have um, external scripts. And you, yes, you could do. And then it, as as, um, as Cody Beard says, then it's then it becomes uh, moddable and you can change it. But um, I kind of invented this this idea of just interactions to kind of meant to do that. Oh yes, yeah, so, so you mean when you walk through it to get into a speaker state? Yeah, I could do that. Um, I could also drop some more teleporters uh, into the place, so I can I can go I can have a um, 
some kind of um, magic word which I could drop in there. The save function, yeah. Um, although the original game didn't have a save, so I, I do. I, I've told this story before. You had 30 minutes on the mainframe at the university to. Um, that's how much runtime you got per login, and you could only log in once a day into the mainframe. So um, you had 30 minutes a day. So it was like, oh, I was stuck in the maze, or I'm stuck here. How do I get past this? And then you run out of time, and then you come back the next day, go down to the computer labs, and um, and try again. But yeah, it isn't supposed to be a save, but we may have to save. Okay. I think that that is... Um, so we need to look at these rooms, don't we? So um, if we go... I mean, no, it says I need to look at the rooms. So let's go back here. So there's here is a one-way. Uh, so this is a one-way tunnel. This drops down. Um, so it goes all the way down to tight North South Canyon down the bottom there. Okay, so we could do that. Tight North South Canyon, so we could kind of drop that as, you know, as a as a skeleton room, and then here there is a mirror canyon and this body of water here, um, and then there's also another one of these kind of secret, or not secret, but these these kind of tunnels which goes all the way down to this slab room here. So I think what we've got to do is better sort out this rug, which is the treasure, which is the title of the stream is kill the dragon we've done that bit um and we need to take its stuff which is the rug Seal stable maybe have the a dev save function yeah yeah absolutely um it, it would it would make uh, testing a lot easier but I, i've not done it yet maybe we'll do that i think it's a good it's a really good idea um okay so uh, let's, let's sort out some of these more mundane dungeon pieces first um so And close that down and these are a bit more kind of straightforward to actually um implement so we've got secret uh northeast canyon we've got the um wicked green dragon barring your way we've got the um the secret the way back um to the um, hall of the mountain king and there is actually going to be another room here another move so there's this one way move which was down Um, uh, we could do with some text for that. Um, so it says, "You squeeze your, yourself down, and soon realize that you will never get." back up again so this is um this is this one way kind of um move that we're gonna have to cope with and that's it's yourself yourself i guess it wants an american spelling does it yeah we'll give it an american spelling um if you're stable this adventure could be an interesting code Golf. What's code golf? Is that where you kind of um, you pass it around and to different people do different parts? I've not heard of code code golf before. Um, so this is going to be um, a new location which we haven't got yet. So let's create a new location. So, um, this is going to be um, tight north south. Was it a canyon? Tight north south. It was down here. Canyon, yeah. Lots of canyons. So canyon, I think, is a, a different meaning in um, caving because they're not actually they don't look like canyons, do they? Really, they're tight squeezes. Uh, if you're able, um, code golf is the shortest possible language. Okay. There's a specific Slack exchange for that. Often. Um, 
after mind-bogglingly short programs, yeah, this is this is not a mind-bogglingly short program. This is a mind-bogglingly large program, as you can see, and it's all inside the bot as well, so it gets even bigger. <laughs> uh, so this is going to uh, um, it's going to in, it's going to inherit from adventure location. Uh, And uh, let's just pinch some code out of an existing location. And what I do want to have um, when when I got Mark Miller on, I want him to help me build some templates so that I can create various um, rooms, for example, very simply, and just with a um, just with a simple um, template. And I'm sure we can do that. Let's bring in some missing. Usings. There we go. That should be everything. So there's no item here. Ooh, I can just see a problem in this one here. We've got to. Uh, let's fix this up first. So in the items, there is a um, there's a dragon, of course, but there's also a rug, isn't there? Um, so we want to call out item factory and get an instance of um, passing the game and get item dot rug. Yep, so there's a that Persian rug is in there as well. Um, okay. So that's that. So in the tight north south canyon, north tight north south canyon, we don't really know uh, what we can do there yet. Um, so let's say there are no moves. Uh, tight canyon. So let's pull over the original source code for adventure. If I can grab, grab the, uh, oops, I'm finding, because it's dark, and it's dark over on the other screen, it's, I find it hard to find that. So, uh, places. Uh, so this is the original source code. This is all in, written in C. Um, and these are just like, the, like a little text database. So it was, uh, so what we'll do is go to moves and it was secret north south. No, it was secret canyon. Um, but it's finding that the um, their abbreviations can often be um, the main issue. We look at, look into this uh, list of um, moves and text. So that's a maze. Um, Swiss cheese pit, secret North South Canyon. Okay, so that's the one that we, where the dragon lives. Um, so you'd have thought it'd be around here. So it's um, secret North South Canyon. We're looking for secret. Yeah, so we need this one here, secret Canyon one. Let's find that. Um. So oh, it's in here somewhere. Uh, it doesn't seem to have the down. Our map definitely shows there's a down. Hmm. Now, sometimes I find this is there's some discrepancies with the um, the code because there there are different point values. This is a 550 point value game, whereas the one I'm coding is a 350 points. Uh, 
if we ever work out how to how to assign points. So this is oh, I think it's this uh, it's, that's the North South Canyon. We're in this room here, or this room. There's two variants of it, and we've got the dragon, the rug. Uh, oh, tight! There it is. Secret East West East West tight. And the one we're after is tight North South Canyon. Tight North South Canyon. Um. Let's guess. Secret East West tight. So there isn't a secret north south tide according to not, not with that kind of spelling anyway. There's so many different people actually contributed to this source code that I'm not sure um it's that consistent. So we're in let's look for tight. Tight and tight are still there, look. Um so I'll look for north south. We load to those. Well, let's let's not bother with this. Let's let's just put some again in our tight, which takes it to the north and south. Um, and then we could say um, is a um, crack in the roof, but there is no way you could climb. Yeah, I think that'll do. There's a crack in the roof, but there's no way you could climb. You could climb up there. Okay. Uh, so that's going to be a bit of a dead end. So we need to add this to our locations. Um, So let's add this to our, our list of locations. There's a locations enum which lives in here. And it's going to be called uh, whatever we call that, Tight North South Canyon. So um when we talk about the dungeon and the um and the um colossal cave being kind of swappable, basically this list of locations and the classes that make up it are, are, what, are what comprises a dungeon. So uh, Fuel Stables posted a load of squiggles in there, I'm not quite sure what that is. That, that, oh, this is the JAPT program that determines a number of, if a number is a Cyclops number. Yeah, I don't, yeah, okay. It's basically, uh, for you viewers on YouTube, it is, um, it's four random looking symbols, a space, and then two, um, the letters, but they've got um, diacritics on them. Yeah, so that's and that, that's program. Yeah, I, I, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm not sure. I'm too keen on code golf if that's what it produces for your snowball. So yeah, never mind. Okay, so we got our tour type North South Canyon. Um, we should be able to then drop that into this location here. So we should be able to go down to the tight North South Canyon at least. And then we've got the, uh, so we're not going to go any further down there. Just note that that is an exit that's available to us. If you go down. Um, okay. Um, there's a secret canyon which ends exits to north and east. So that's interesting. So there was, there was definitely some text to do with that secret canyon, which we need to pop into there. And uh, that was in place. And this was um uh, 
was in canyon something or other. Canyon wide, not canyon tight. Uh, there's the mirror canyon. That's there's the reservoir, so it must be in the areas. Um, okay, so interesting. So that doesn't have. Am I put this in the wrong place? No, it says the secret East West Canyon has a drop down on that map. The secret East West oh, this is a North East Canyon. We put it in the wrong place. Okay, well that's fair enough. Let's pop. Let's get rid of this. And we haven't got to worry about the way back. There isn't a way back. Uh, get rid of that. And we'll pop back to the secret east-west canyon, which I think is where we need to have this. Yes, it is. Look, there's the down move. So if you go down, you may not be able to get back up. Crossing over a very tight canyon 15 feet below. So that's where we need to drop this player move in. Okay, I'm glad we noticed that because that could have been a bit confusing. Okay, good. So that's that drop down there. Um, and then back in our north south canyon, we've to the north south canyon. That's where the rug is. No, no, north south canyon. Here we go into, we go beyond the uh, the dragon and the rug. And get to um, yeah. So this is this is the secret north ca north south uh, canyon. But there is this this I think this what's interesting. I wonder what that is. That may be a one way to pop up into that room. There's Mirror Canyon beyond that. Um, is there anything else I want to do in these rooms? Um, I don't know. Oh, we've got to be able to go south again, haven't we? We've got to be able to move out, back out of this room. So um, let's just pinch a bit of code from here. Um, we'll pinch the whole lot, in fact. Valid moves. So when we get to the north-south canyon, um, that which is uh, which is this one, there should be a north and a south exit and looks like there's a down though it's not exactly clear whether what that is we'll have to look at the source code for that uh, so secret north south i think we saw secret north south secret north south Oh yes, above a large room. Look, you are in a secret north-south canyon above a large room. Um, is that what we're displaying? Secret is it north and south? Above a large room. So we definitely got a. Um, this is going to be Mirror Canyon, which doesn't exist yet. Um, we don't want any text for the moment. So we pop string but empty into there. Then we've got a south, uh, and that goes to the secret north east. Northeast Canyon, and then we've got a down which goes to the slab room. Uh, down, and this is slab room. Uh, but what we're going to do is comment out those two because we haven't got those two defined. Okay. Uh, do that. Do you want 
it wants a generic list. Okay. Okay. So we've got some things to come back to there. Just but it's they, they you know, filling these things in is um is fairly kind of rote stuff. So that's why I want to get kind of code rush to template a lot of this stuff. So we just kind of generate rooms quickly. Not that bad doing copy and paste, but not ideal. Okay, so what I wanted to do, um, according to my running order in the last few minutes, is just start to look at some of the multiplayer functions. Um, and I thought we'd start off with just uh, be able to speak to other players. So if there's another player in the same location as you, you can speak to them. So let's add a, a new command. So add a class, um, I'll call it say. Um, Make that public and let's get another com command uh, and just pinch some stuff from here. So we're going to um, inherit from um, base adventure command and we're going to have this constructor. And we're going to need to bring some namespaces in. There we go. Um, that's that, and we need to um, we need to implement the abstract class, and it, we just all we do is implement um, the invoke command, as we've seen before with the yes and no. Okay. Um, so if we go over to the look command, you can see in here. Um, if you can see, uh, if there's light, if it's dark and there's light, or you're not blinded, which isn't a thing yet, but can see, the definition of can see is going to be uh, uh, able to be extended, so maybe we've got a state of we're blind. Um, you've got other players here. So uh, let's pinch that bit of code so it knows whether there's any other players in the location. So other players here is that. Um, so basically what we're saying is if there's any players in the current location and it's not you, then we're going to get a, a list of other players over here. So we need some link in here. So this is going to be a list of players. A list of adventure player. Okay. Um... So um, if other player here players here for any, and then we're going to do something um, else. We're going to say um, to our player, uh, we're going to use the chat client that's on the player, and we're going to post a direct message to the player that says something like um, talking to yourself is the first sign of madness no. Okay, so um, if you start, if you say something, but there's no other players to hear, then it's going to just print that out. Um, then we want something that we're going to say. Okay, so what happens with um, with commands is that you get a bunch of arguments that are passed in. Uh, these arguments, um, that it's a list of arguments. It breaks up the command line, and um, each of the argument gets here the, the command itself and then any number of arguments after that normally it's a kind of an object or an item or something like that that's passed in there but this way it's going to actually be um the message you want to say um so um so uh, um what are the content is going to be equal to um string dot join um with a space um uh, e dot uh, args as list um to array to array uh, 
and we can trim that if any spaces at the end of it. And then we can say uh, var message equals um, so we'll do string interpolation. And we'll say um, player dot username says oops says and then we'll pass in the content. Okay, um, talking to yourself. And then if there are any players present, then you're going to we're going to basically for each of those. To the player in other player players here, then um, other player dot chat client. So this could be on a different chat client. Post message of the player. Oops. One day I'll have a stream where I don't make all these mistakes and it's going to be message. And, um, and then player, we'll just give it some feedback. Player dot chat client. Player dot chat client dot post direct message to the player um, I'll just use string interpretation again uh, you say I just put the content in there okay that should be a suitable initial test of uh, what's this um, that's an adventure player post direct message. That's it. Okay, let's give that a go. We this doesn't take much testing because we can just we can just um around the brick building. Okay. Interesting that code cleanup leaves system in the using list. Okay, let's fire it up. And we'll bring up a Slack client and we'll go into general and we'll join the adventure. And here we are. We're actually in the adventure and we'll say say hello there. Ah, which say which hello? So, um, which hello are you referring to? So that's interesting. Say hello there. Why is it said that? Hmm. Okay. So say. So I think the base ad base adventure command must be doing this. Um. So what's it say here? No, it's just an abstract method. Uh, we haven't added a say command. That's the problem. So go to our command registry, and we need to do a uh, var say is a new say, and it's going to be say for now. Anyone think any of these synonyms for say? Let me know. Game in as well. And we want um say say um no, we'll just have say for the moment because I was thinking we could have yell and things like that, but perhaps that's not appropriate. So say we've got say passed in, so let's run the game up again. Oops, I think we just killed you off. No, we're still running. Um close that down. 
Um, so join the game again, adventure. So we'll um, say hello there. And it should come back and say talking self is the first sign of madness, which is good. And then what we'll do is we'll bring uh, Discord into it. Um, and we'll go adventure. We'll join the adventure. So um, it's also said that I'm here. So you can see Stuart Bonham is here, which is my name in in here. It's going to be interesting this actually because I think it might be the same name in here. Let's have a look. Uh, and I'll do a um, and look. So I'll have a look around. Oh, SMB is also here. So um, yeah. So I'm um, Stuart underscore Bonham here in um in Slack and SMB over in um. Discord, so if I say, uh, let's try and get these side by side, shall we? So we can say over here, um, let's say, hello, how are you? And it does what it says that. Um, um, we should be able to say, um, Thanks. Yeah, so that's working. So we got kind of the first elements of, um, as well as people being in the same location, which was already there, we got some basic interaction. So I think what we want to do next time is to start to look at perhaps um, giving items to each other. And I'm going to be a bit careful with giving items around because um, um, if they've already got the item, you don't want to. Um, you don't want them to have two of it, basically. So um, they can only have one of each item. Uh, so if they've got a lamp and you give them a lamp, we, we, we should disallow that. Uh, and we've got to be a bit careful in that um, we've got to make sure that if if you say, say I've got the key and I give you the key and then you walk a couple of uh, locations further and drop the key and then I go to that location, the key should be there. So we've got to make sure that's there. Um, but other than that, I think... Um, that is probably a suitable point to think about closing the stream. Okay, so let's go and have a look. Uh, first, what we'll do is we'll um, we'll commit our changes to GitHub. So if you um, if you're interested in the code or any of the code we write on stream, it's all open source. Have a look, take it away, play with it. Submit sub, um, pull requests, fork the code, do what you want with it. It's all there out there for public uh, consumption. Um, maybe we want to kind of um, do some pull requests from different dungeons or different rooms or, or just different types of commands that you think would be fun. So there's the GitHub. Um, and I push all of my um, videos out to um, YouTube after 24 hours, uh, but um, all the episodes are currently on Twitch for 60 days. And I start dropping off um, in about two months' time. Um, but in the meantime, everything will go on YouTube. And so episodes 1 to 17 are on there. So the Secure API work we did during the first few streams, uh, the Alexa skill building, and the um, and the GraphQL work are up there uh, already. So if you're interested in those subjects, there's some, uh, there's some videos up there for you. Um, um, do follow me on Twitter if you're able. Uh, and do subscribe to the YouTube channel. That really helps if you do that. Um, Twitter, um, follow me on Twitter and um, and get updates. Especially if I do pop-up streams, I do plan on some pop-up stuff. You missed all, almost all of it, Calvin. Never mind. Say so it will be on. We'll be on YouTube um, tomorrow, and it's already going to be when, when we stop streaming. It'll be on video on demand on Twitch anyway. So if you want to watch it back, yeah, you need to turn notifications. Yeah. Um, I think you do follow the channel, so um, that's the other best way of getting notifications when we, we're live is to follow. Um, but um, I, I do realise that um, this is an early stream, so you know the, the view account um, on these early streams is, is relatively low. So most people who, who pop into the um, channel are um, already followers. So that's uh, that's fine. Let's um, let's get up all this code that we've created. I say all of it, probably not that much. There's a fair amount. So that's. Um, Episode 18. 
so we'll soon be heading towards episode 20 so uh yeah so next wednesday episode 20 episode 21 i i do really hope that mark miller will be joining us as a special guest on that um he did have power problems yesterday um sorry on, on monday and he continued to have power outages yesterday actually but he managed to run on battery power for his stream but we do plan to um to have our our joint stream um in two weeks time so not next monday but the monday afterwards let's sync that up to uh to github and it'll be there for you to uh, peruse and do it what you will so you do if you want to to look at it and feel so inclined to put a pull request in do that um i'm not expecting anyone to do that but you know, if you do if you do feel inspired to add something to the game that's great um so let's go now and try and find someone suitable to raid if anyone's got any suggestions um all ears let's, otherwise we'll go to my channel and see who so we got instafluff or code rushed code rushed uh, is probably the we'll go to code rushed i think if everyone doesn't mind that um especially as mark is um going to be um a guest is reasonable to, to rate him so um thank you all for uh very much for the um uh, for attending the stream it's been uh, a lot of fun um we got a fair amount done uh, new features into the game and um i'm quite um i'm quite pleased where it's going um obviously we won't this will be an occasional topic there won't be long um long sequence of streams on the bot but um while i'm preparing the next topic I thought it kind of a good idea to do um do some bot work and also I think that Mark's um Mark's uh, tutorials on code which will really help me out. So we're going to raid Mark Miller now. Um do stay with us for for Mark's stream is doing amazing things with TypeScript, graphics, sound effects, rolling dice for Dungeons and Dragons. It's absolutely amazing. So let's go and uh, host him now, uh, raid him now. Uh, so we're counting down so um yeah do do stay with um with us and enjoy enjoy some fantastic uh, entertainment on mark's channel and i'll see you next monday bye bye everyone